R. Davis Younts, you are an attorney who has successfully defended Naval Officer Lieutenant Bill Mosley, who did not want to be vaccinated uh, for COVID-19 on religious grounds. Yet the military has mandated all service members must receive the COVID vaccine, and the services are issuing blanket denials for any exemption, even for those applying for a religious exemption. Sir, I'm wondering what seems to be going on. Well, there's a lot that's going on. It's sort of a complicated issue. It begins with why the military is treating this vaccine differently than they've treated other vaccines. And then it transitions into questions about what the military is going to do with religious freedom, basic constitutional rights of military members. So there's there's a lot to unpack and there are a lot of complicated issues when we start to deal with this vaccine mandate. I think that the, the federal law says that products granted emergency authorization cannot be ma mandated for the military unless the president, quote, determines in writing that complying with such requirements is not in the interests of national security, end quote. And uh, is, it, is it accurate that neither uh, President Trump nor President Biden has made such a determination? And was that part of your case with regard to Lieutenant Mosley? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. There has never been a, a pr presidential exception uh, made for these vaccines. And as it stands today, there are still no FDA approved vaccines that have been ma manufactured and made available to military members. So as it stands now, the military is still mandating an emergency youth authorization vaccine. That's a clear violation of federal statutes. So that's the fundamental issue, the starting point that Lieutenant Mosley challenged, that we challenged in his case and, and what we won on in his case. So the question is going to occur to a lot of Americans who watch this uh, and anybody who knows about this case is how come, how is it then uh, that uh, the military is continuing to acquire uh, vaccinations if, if the predicate seems to be uh, wobbly at best and uh, there's no, apparently, any legal justification for it? How do you, how do you uh, square that uh, circle? You know, as someone who served myself for almost 20 years, I still serve as a reservist. So I'm going through the accommodation process myself. Uh, that's something that I've been struggling with, my clients have been struggling with. It doesn't make a lot of sense unless you try to look for to political reasons for doing it. Uh, what are the implications for the rights of service members here? What I mean, what uh, you're kind of in the nexus of this. What? Uh, how is this going to play out? It seems like this is something which would go to the Supreme Court, which would be an issue of of, uh, of fundamental rights of individuals serving the military. Is that correct or not? It absolutely is. One of the critical things that, that's so important and so unique about our military, it's just an important part of our history, is military members do not give up their constitutional rights because they join the military. Unique to any country in world history, our military officers, our military members, we swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution. And so it would be absurd to think military members have to give up basic constitutional First Amendment rights when it comes to service in the military particularly when the military is treating this vaccine uh, different, these vaccines different than anything else they've mandated in the past. They're ignoring natural immunity, which they've never done before. Uh, they're not even taking that into consideration. So hugely important, very, very significant. And quite frankly, the way these religious accommodations are being treated, um, it, it is creating a purge of Christians um, that are pro-life in the military, and that's going to be a significant issue for a long time, and it's going to have an impact on readiness.